These smooth-coated otter pups have spent their first six weeks in the safety of the halt, but now it's time to take to the water. And their playground? Singapore, one of the most densely populated countries on the planet. And thanks to conservation efforts, such as cleaning up their waterways, Singapore now has one of the densest population of otters on Earth too. The otters have made the city their own. And with plenty of fish to hunt, they've even become a tourist attraction. The young cubs, still reliant on their mother's milk, are just learning how to swim. And after a successful hunting trip, it's time to try some fish. Now their teeth may be small, but they're still razor sharp. In their natural habitat, otters will haul out onto a riverbank to feed. But in Singapore, this marina works just fine. But house crows have also moved into Singapore. Native to India and a few other South Asian countries, house crows have hitched a ride on ships all around the world, appearing as far away as Ireland, South Africa, and even the USA. With big brains and an open mind to all things gastronomic, these avian marauders are well equipped for urban life. They're a loose social cooperative, working together to communicate dangers and to find and share food. And why catch food when you can steal it from some youngsters? Crows seem to know instinctively that pulling tails is a good distraction tactic. It almost seems like a game to them. They'll even do it when there isn't food involved. Show a crow a tail, and it seems they'll just pull it. And it helps when you have eight other beaks joining in. That is, until mum's had enough. Eventually, the cubs do get tired of the hassle, leaving what's left of the fish to the crows. Persistence, it seems, is another key crow quality. But the cubs don't seem to mind. Plenty more where that came from. In just another six weeks, they'll be catching fish for themselves, but they probably have a lifetime ahead of getting their tails pulled.